It's Jordan Mulligan from the Mulligan Brothers, and today's interview highlight is with Moran Surf. This video is sponsored by MulliganBrothers.com, where you can now buy the Inspire Change t-shirt, and the Not A Journal, the official Mulligan Brothers journal, has just gone live as well, all linked down below. But let's jump into the highlights. Can you take a memory, bring it up here, adjust it positively, and then put it back? Therapy does that all the time. Therapy is all about, you take a bad memory, you go to a person whose expertise is in helping you shape memories and look at them differently. And their job, if you do it right, is basically to say, Jordan, tell me again about the breakup. So they make you pull the memory, load it. And then you tell them the story that you may have told them already three times in the last three sessions. But if they're a good therapist, they will recognize what are the moments that make this memory negative. And then they're going to intervene. They're going to say, you know, Jordan, I, I want to tell you something. You just said that... Uh, you didn't do anything, it just left you. Well, I want to remind you that the day before you said something that actually might be seeming like you said something that, that prompted her. Or maybe you always tell yourself the story that it happened to you, but actually I remember that 10 times in your life that, that you uh, said to me that this was something you... So they're going to inject a new perspective. And you might say, oh, or not, and so on. But in that, they change the memory. So when the session is over and you're going to overwrite it, you now have a new lens on that memory. And if they're good, they know when to put it, how to frame it, and so on. So the week after when you come, you already will load a modified version and open it again for a small dent again. And uh, after six meetings, you will see the story differently. You will still remember that there was the event, but maybe you will see it totally in a different lens. And that is the point of good therapy, of good interaction, of journaling, of uh, any input into the brain. I think we've, we've already spoke probably about five, five or six different ways of, of hacking the brain. Is, is, is there loads more? Like, is there loads more? Have we covered most of them or? Not only are there loads more, it's also like be between the time we started talking and, uh, and the time we finished talking, there must be a new one. We're learning a lot about the brain all the time and think about it like from the perspective of neuroscientists, you and I focused on humans because we are humans and the audience are humans and so on. But the bedding for all the research comes from actually animals where we learn so much. So we know how to do insane things with animals that we never gonna, or not, I shouldn't say never, but we are far from using humans. Like we know how to take memory from animal one and put it in, memory in animal two. So it's just like copy memory. We know how to uh, strengthen memory or delete memory in the brain of an animal. So we know, but thousands of hacks that work on brains but were not implemented yet in humans which kind of are you know kind of uh, worms or a uh, huge opportunity treasure trove uh, of things we can do and i think that in the next couple of years we're gradually gonna translate them to humans and you'll see more and more tools available in your arsenal if, for myself and for many people who who follow this channel, we, we have goals of five to 10 years from now. Um, the, the ultimate goal or the, the big goal that's in the forefront of our mind, um, as most successful people do. What do you see from the people who have achieved those goals is like a common thread and a common link from the neuroscience side? It, it, it's a great question. So, so I would say the kind of, if people have been given diaries and questionnaires for a while where they were asked kind of what do you want in life i would boil down the answer to one word happiness that's the thing that uh, most people uh, say they want they just have different uh, theories on what would give them that if you ask people okay what would make you happy a lot of people think that money makes happy they kind of list in the top five thing money uh, other people say relationship, like if I just married the woman I love, or if I just found the guy that I uh, dream of, or if two of us would have kids, that's another kind of big theme uh, uh, among people who have kids. Uh, usually it's when the kids leave home, uh, when we get time for ourselves again, uh, finally when we retire. So there, you know, kind of like depends on where you ask a person, you get opposite answers. Like I want kids or I want them out already. But uh, either way, people have theories on what will make them happy. And unfortunately, most of the theories are not true. 
uh, there's a name for that in psychology. It's called the treadmill effect. You walk towards a goal, you get there, and you actually realize that you are in the same place that you were before because it's not it. Uh, for the most part, people who wanted money and got the money did not change their happiness. People who wanted uh, money and lost a lot of money did not decrease their happiness. People who got married did not, you know, there's a spike. If you wanted to uh, have a kid and you have a kid for a few weeks, months, days, you will have a spike in happiness very quickly. In case, if not to uh, where it below it was before, at least to where it was before. So I think that the goal of happiness is probably shared among all your audience members and viewers. How to get there is a different thing. And science can tell you, first of all, what doesn't get you there. The things I said before, money, uh, kids, relationships, aren't. What does? And those are sometimes mundane things people don't uh, believe in. Or even if they believe, say, yeah, yeah, come on, but not me. Like, I will need the money or fine, but I'm not willing to do it. And, and for give an example, uh, sleep high quality sleep if you go to sleep every day in good time and spend many hours and not use a lot of so on you're gonna be happier in the days after a lot more than if you made a million dollars sounds to most people ah, not me but the, the the diaries we ask people to report their stats uh, exercise you know if you if you like healthy living actually contributes to happiness a lot more than a lot of things that are external uh, and in that sense, I think that if there's one take-home message for your audience is that they're probably aligned on the one word answer, which is they want happiness, or some people see it as the reverse, say minimize suffering. But either way, that's what people want. That's probably true for a lot of people. How to get there uh, requires a little bit of work on knowing what's the right goal and how to get there. What I love is that the brain is so complicated, like what we're talking about is so complicated, but the the way of not fixing it but the way of getting the most out of it is very simple some of the stuff is really simple stuff like exercise yeah. and sleep and diaries i think simple as in we tangible but i think for many people those those things are, are uh, they seem kind of they say to say okay right now i have a nine to five job when will i actually go to the gym or how can i so in many ways i think there's there's some people that find it kind of just if they say I can't because of life and even a lot of people who can it kind of you know I, I was surprised and that's gonna uh, uh, I was surprised by how many wealthy billionaire that you see in the news and so on look unhealthy and unfit so I if say okay like the, the the people who work nine to five they say well if I had time I would definitely go to you and then you see people that you know seemingly they have and they also do it because it doesn't like it's not just about the opportunity you have to actually have your, the same brain that benefits has to also want to take the effort. And a lot of us know different scientists, uh, billionaires, uh, are living in a world where it's very hard to do the right thing. We live in a world that's complex. There are so many options, so many things, and a lot of frictions and a lot of barriers to getting simple things, some by design and some just because the world is rich of things. In theory, no one should be hungry in the world right now. There's abundance of food, but there are people that are hungry. And that's because of politics, and that's because of like the kind of way we created the world. And even among the people who live in, say, the US, where I live right now, because we have so many options, people don't know they go to the restaurant. They don't want to choose and it's done. So even though all the options are there and it seems to be just go and choose like the world is your oyster we created a world that every restaurant has everything that actually doesn't work with our brain that likes simple things easy things and that's why we might not choose the right food in the restaurant or we might not go to the right restaurant and so on and rich or poor smart stupid uh, healthy unhealthy we somehow all live in a world that doesn't make it easy for our brain to do the right thing I had such an interesting conversation with Moran Surf, um, something I hope we can do again. Now that the restrictions are kind of uplifted, hopefully we can start flying around the world and film these projects in person like we normally do. Um, guys, the video was sponsored by MulliganBrothers.com. We're buying journal, the journal, buying the t-shirt, all that kind of stuff allows us to fly around the world. So you are making this possible. And our commitment to you is to make 
free, inspiring content uh, in return for your fantastic support. And we hope to continue to do that for years and years and make documentaries for Netflix and all these kind of things so people can see these inspirational films and feel inspired and motivated to go make a change in the world. Um, if you want to see what I get up to on a day-to-day -day basis, it's at Jordan Mulligan Brother, link down below on Instagram. Uh, it's not linked down below, but you will find it somewhere. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Go inspire some change. Have a blessed and productive day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.